Welcome to the weekly group discussion for Threat Insights. Um, we have a somewhat busy agenda. I'm going to jump straight into it. Um, thanks, everyone, for attending. Uh, number one, issues for planning breakdown. Integrate developer security training. Um, I'm going to share my screen. So if I remember this, I didn't carrot it, but I do remember um, looking at it. So there you go. Uh, the, the idea is to provide a link to a third party based on the CWE or CV for, for, uh, for a finding. Right, Matt? Is that the Correct. It's five second pitch? Realistically, it's probably more CWE based. Um, as opposed to CVE, but yes, it'll be a deterministic identifier uh, plus language. Yeah. Um, we had some questions in the document. Michal's not here to verbalize. He, he I, I don't think he had the full picture. He was talking about uh, documentation, updates and links to references, but um, um, Lindsay replied and explained that um, we, we, we're going to integrate with the with the training solution. And his second question is about um, which training. And then Matt replied. Do you wanna, do you wanna verbalize that, uh, Matt? Or have you covered it already? No, 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 uh, absolutely. So part of the idea is this, is this is part feature, part a little bit of an experiment. So right now we have two training vendors that are interested in offering their training. And so it would be almost kind of a, like a free sample. In the event that there are even more than two, I think what the idea is, is we'll let users choose. They may have experience or preference for one versus the other, but none of these vendors is going to cover everything. So every language and CWE combination. So the idea is part of the user selection, and it's in the mockups here, is that you can actually choose more than one. And if you choose more than one, there's going to be a selection of a primary. And the primary is where it will always try to pull content from first. And if it doesn't find anything, it will just go down the list of the other ones that you have activated for the project. So there's no cases where you display more than one training link? If uh, both no, vendors have solutions. Exactly. We're just going to try first preference. And then if that doesn't work out, if you have anything else turned on, we'll go down the list of the other ones that are actually enabled for the project or we won't return anything. Am I in the right uh, design? Yes. Yeah, so this is the configuration. If you can you zoom in there a little bit. Yeah, so if you go down here, you see the there's the primary selector. So if you just toggle a uh, single right. one on, that's the only one we'll try to pull content from. If you turn on more than one, you'll have to pick a primary just so we know which one to try first. And you mentioned this being uh, a trial. Did we consider not doing this work and, and controlling the selection via feature? feature um, Maybe a feature flag. I'm not sure I follow. So, the, the implementing this means uh, doing the front end, doing the the back end stuff, the storing the configuration. I'm thinking that we don't we don't know if this thing is going to pan out. If we're going to keep it, we could not do the screen and use a feature flag in, instead. And say, hey, if you want to use it, we'll turn it on. The problem is that on, on .com, we need to ask, uh, I think the, the configure team did that for uh, CAS, the Kubernetes agent. They, they say, hey, if you're interested in this feature, let us know. And somebody would go there in the chat ops and say, enable for project X. I guess I'm still not really following. So if we have at least one of the training vendors well, I have one that is definitely wants to move forward with this. So I, we have an NDA in place. We have the API from them. So the idea is as soon as we build this out, it's it's live. That's mm -hmm. why the feature is going to default to being off. 
So I guess I'm still not understanding what the feature flag would get us. The feature flag would be cheaper, would get us the integration without doing this piece of work. It would, it would use a cheap toggle, like a cheaper version of this toggle, of this configuration screen. I, I don't know if it's worth yeah, it. I think sure. you've already answered answered my question. We 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 didn't we didn't consider it. Um, maybe we don't want to. So I have a, a similar question after that. When you're done, Matt. Go for it. I'm, oh, I'm I, I was going to say the. I think the one reason that I don't want to go a feature flag route is that those are not very visible, and it requires a lot of effort to go turn those on. So one of the designs in here is actually we're going to try to drive people to this with an end product notice, which will take them to that part of the configuration screen. Because we really want to say, hey, look, there's there's something here that's new, it's shiny, it's for the engineering teams and not security teams, even though it's a security focused feature. So I think it's not necessarily a bad idea if we want to try a feature flag, if we do the back end and not the configuration screen, if we can do all the other like the MR exposure bits. But yeah, long term it, it definitely needs to be the, the visible yeah. configuration. Uh, it could still be part of the the iteration through to delivering this. The backend can start doing it, and you know, but that that will come up in in planning breakdown, I guess. Lindsay. So on that same note of iteration, you know, one area that seems like maybe we could release in a second iteration would be that defaulting to the second vendor and choosing the primary. Would it be possible to consider this as a first iteration of you just configure your vendor? Say we do have two. This will be a lot more simple if we have one, obviously. But if we end up with two, you choose your one vendor. Uh, those are the solutions that we go with. And then we can build onto this with a second iteration of, okay, now you've got your non-primary vendor to supply your solutions, uh, add those sort of secondary suggestions in, in a, a second phase, perhaps? Because it does feel kind of big. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree. The only consideration that I have there is the sensitivity around having two different vendors and how do we how do we decide who we're going to pick to go forward? So we're and GitLab doesn't doesn't do preference and oh, favor. To be to be clear, what I meant was to display both of them on the screen, but not allow the option to it be one or the other, right? Just be mutually exclusive, and the customer can I choose which of the two vendors that they choose to see the solutions from, and then the other one will be dormant until they switch it. So it's like a boolean, an and or. Gotcha. No, I think that's a good intermediate step towards that. I'll leave a comment the two in the are, issue. Yeah, the, we only have two that are engaged right now. I think my thinking behind this is once we have all of this in place, and by all of it, I mean what we see here in the design, I'd like to go out and approach additional training vendors to see if they want to be included here. So then it's a lot easier to add them. But um, if there is just two, having a toggle, yeah, I think that's, that's perfectly okay. You touched on the on the preference uh, having having these partners um, showing side by side on the same screen. Is there any consideration to randomizing that list, changing the order every time somebody opens that page? Uh, who's making scope bigger now, Tiago? <laughs> I want our partners to be happy with this. Yeah, I, I know. I, I don't disagree that that potential for like, oh, I want top placement kind of thing. I'm wondering from a user perspective, would that be irritating if there were four or five of these and it randomized yeah. it on every single project and you're like, yeah. oh, where's the one? I, I can see um, that it's in alphabetical order now, which is which is fair, I suppose. Uh, yeah, I guess I, I was going to say, let's just, by do, chance. Yeah, let's just do alphabetical. I think that's cleaner and then it's an easy way to say, look, you know, we're, we're not trying to put any money particular order, it's, it's alphabetized. Very good, uh, Daniel, and Shubashis and Gerardo. Any, any questions? Lindsay and I are uh, hogging the the call. The, this is uh, the issue we opened. It's a confidential, right? Uh, this one. So. We... It is. So uh, did I ruin? Did I ruin sharing the the video, Matt? No, the reason the issue is confidential is I had originally mentioned some of the partner names, and even though they're removed, it is still in the change history on the issue, so I can't uh, right. not make this issue uh, confidential. You need to so copy that, it. Are those, yeah, are those mockups? Are those mockups not actual partner names, though? Those are fakies? They're fake names. They, they 
Yeah. They look a lot <laughs> like fake names. <laughs> no. I don't know. Because I thought they were very clever. Joyride. The cakewalk oh, oh, oh. training fund. <laughs> you know, clearly, uh, I'm so not a marketing person. <laughs> it's it's already in a much more public uh, video from a chat, but I, I actually on a very recent webinar showed this mockup, and somebody pointed out to me that apparently that is a is it a lot of negative history behind that term, and it's something that. I mentioned Andy, we're, we should probably take that out of the mockups. But my grade school fairs were very revolving around cakewalks. I, I will, I'll ask offline. Never mind. Just go, just go Google it, and like every other word that you grew up with and didn't question where it came from, it, it is not not nice. We should stop using the word. So, when we are talking about the toggling between these only two options, is it like we are talking about like in the back end only? True and false, um, keeping Boolean for now or something to save work. Well, you know, actually, Lindsay, if we make it a toggle, how are we going to disable it? Because right now, since they're individually toggleable, you if you just turn them all off, then you cannot have the feature at all. That's solvable in the UI somehow, right? I mean, you making remove something... the radio. And when you click one, you unclick the other, right? I think it'd be none, and then one, and then option two, right? You could choose nothing. I'm, I'm sure that like Daniel has some great suggestions. I'm sure Andy might have some thoughts on how we could accomplish that. But I just imagine the logic to do the default would be harder than figuring out like how we'd implement that in the UI. So from back backend perspective, I'm saying like a, if we are adding in future more options, it's in in the back end it it would be rather to save it in a fashion like how we will do, deal with in the in future because like if it's boolean boolean now as a column then we need to remove that and make it um state something one two three or four yeah so you say it's easier to do the the configuration okay. as is yes how, how about from from the from a front end point of view daniel do you have an opinion no, I think it uh, should be fairly straightforward. Because this, uh, I don't think we have a mock for it, but you, you, you potentially would see another, another link here, right? No, you would only ever see one. So it's, it's all oh, right. Return. Yeah, right. that's the, that's the idea behind the primary. Got it. Now, honestly, that may be a future option if people really like it. You know, show me all the all the results for the training. But then now you're just talking about more additional calls for each particular piece of content. Can it happen like is, is, is like for two identifiers, we will get two training links or something? Because we can have more than one identifier, right? In one... So that are you talking about if an individual vulnerability has like yep. two CWEs? Um, that's a good question. I think this, this kind of comes down to us tracking CWEs internally. So if the CWEs are part of the same hierarchy, then I know at least one of the vendors APIs, you can ask for a CWE anywhere from, forget how deep the CWE hierarchy is, like five or six, I think, uh, layers any of those will return basically the same training. If they're different, that's a good question. So maybe we just go with the primary identifier for the vulnerability. And if that's not available, just take first CWE. Okay. I'm not really sure how that's laid out at the back. And I know that it's not as clean as we would like it to be for stuff like that, but um, yeah, <laughs> just let's just pick one. First CDB you can get to. Any any other questions that we need to answer synchronously, or do we feel like uh, we've answered all the breakdown, plenty of breakdown questions? Matt, I didn't catch your answer to Sebastian's last great question. Would you mind uh, when you're done or later summarizing that in the, the document for him? Oh yeah, yeah. Absolutely. I was trying. There you go. So 
Are requirements clear enough to understand the intent of the request? Do we know the dependencies of work to be accomplished? Is this small enough to complete in one iteration? Dun, dun, dun. Except the last one, everything yes, I think. Which which is not a showstopper for leaving planning breakdown. It's just it just means we'll probably create an epic to span a couple of iterations, right, Linz? Unless if there's a logical way to break it down into two smaller MVCs, which is kind of I think what we were the, the direction we were asking about earlier. Uh, so, you know, yeah. Sebastian had a great uh, response around the backend effort might not be saved at all, and I don't know if there's a big amount of savings in the front end for this suggestion I made, but that doesn't mean there's not other ones. So other ways that we could approach this and not have two full milestones until it, it gets out the door. Yeah, Lindsay, I was thinking about what you said though. And if we modify the mock-up slightly, Subhashish could pursue where we know we want to go on the back end, but if the front end, it really was, like a checkbox to enable the entire sort of chunk of the functionality. And once you enable the chunk, you had the radio boxes. Daniel, I don't know what your thoughts on this, like doing one versus the other. But for me, the savings wasn't from a front end perspective. It was around the defaulting on the back end. Like I, I mm. found out that my primary vendor doesn't have a solution. Now I need to check and see if the secondary vendor has a solution and display that instead. Uh, that would be where the potential savings were. And again, I don't know how much. But Daniel, do you think from a front end there's any? It would depend on what the data from the back end is sending over and how it's structured. But on the configuration side, say on the onset with the way that we're asking the customer to configure between the multiple vendors, I don't think having the, the two checkboxes with the primary indicators, like I don't know would be saving that much from a configuration perspective. Yeah, yeah, that much. Cool, if there are no more questions, I think uh, we are ready to assign DRIs for this and, and the gray area of, of planning breakdown and refinement. And we're not punishing the folks who decided to join this meeting by forcing them to be the, the people that- No, no. Assignment. <laughs> let's, let's not punish people who, who attend the meeting. Um, I mean, you might still end up with Shibashis, but not because he was here. So I'll do that later. I don't know what you want to do. Uh, we, we're at time. We had uh, B and C. I wanted to mention item four, which is the kickoff. I think it's a good idea, Lindsay, that it suggested uh, we could record a video and publish in the channel. Yeah. Or something along. I know you've always you've always done a good job, Tiago, of saying, you know, I've I've stacked the next milestone. Here's what it looks like. I don't know if that's quite the level of, you know, here that the epics we're gonna be tackling. You and I can talk during our one-on-one -on -one later about whether a video or a post is best, but sounds good. It takes a long time to do it in these calls. We do have five more minutes though, if anyone wants to talk about the item that Matt added to the agenda. I know you're a little you're a little excited. We actually don't have five minutes. That's the that's the efficient. Ooh, Twenty-five. Meeting. No, that's for an hour-long calls. Hour-long calls have, end at fifty. Is it? Yeah, half-hour calls yeah. end at twenty-five. I mean, you might be ending your calls five. Minutes I think it's misconfigured. The, the the I think the calendar entry might be misconfigured. It's got the effective meeting turned on for it. Efficient meeting. We we can spend the last five minutes discussing. That's right. It's five or ten minutes. <laughs> Well, go for it. I got a hard stop. Uh, um, I'll pass the the, co the host to someone if I have to drop off. But let, let's uh, let's let's start it anyway. So this, this is a, a giant topic, though. I just remembered what it was that Matt put on there, and it's huge. <laughs> I was about to fess up that I did not do my homework, and I'm looking at it, and I don't know where it starts or it ends. Um, maybe maybe we do a. Should overview? we just skip to Lindsay's? <laughs> Um, we could, unless of you want to, for the sake of the recording, Matt, just do kind of a high level summary of what this is so that folks can start to get acquainted with it before we talk next. Um, yeah, and we we'll continue next week. I'm not saying that what I added on there is going to be short and sweet either. Okay, so the, the, the long and the short of this is this is something that's going to give you a whole overview from a group level of the status of all projects under that group in terms of how the scanners are configured, when they last ran, if there are any particular problems in any individual jobs or pipelines. So this is sort of the 
scanner pipeline health check for an entire group. It's, um, it's something that Becca came up with. We've had several client requests in this area, and I'm not even sure if this is functionally um, feasible yet, given the way that we collect statuses from the jobs. Uh, so I think that's probably the primary thing to come out of this uh, particular design issue. Yeah, I think there's probably uh, back-end questions that, that we can start asking asynchronously because I, I suspect we'll need to at least adjust how, how we collect that information, how we, right, right now it, it's, you, you rely on having a, being able to find a pipeline, right? But if somebody expires their pipeline, their artifacts in, in a week versus a month, now you get a different behavior on that panel. Some people will see, oh, it's disabled because I didn't find the pipeline. Cool. We have two more minutes if anybody wants to ask a question. <laughs> Tiago, you're looking mighty dapper today. Is there a reason why you look so fancy? Oh, mate, I, I, I struggled with the second dose of the COVID thing yesterday. It was, <laughs> I'm just happy to be alive and to be through the worst of it. Glad you're feeling better. Thank you, sir. Very kind of you. All right. I guess thank you very much, everyone, for attending. And uh, I'll see you around. I'll upload this uh, once it's ready. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.